This is a picture of a spiritual teacher who's no longer living. His name is the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. He founded a movement called Transcendental Meditation. You probably have heard of it. TM, Transcendental Meditation. It's not as popular as it once was. When I was a kid growing up, it was so popular that it actually was a curriculum that was be, getting ready to be put into all of the public schools that would teach all children transcendental meditation as a way of helping them focus more on their studies. So it was actually a very strong religious movement that was coming into schools. Have you seen a picture of this man before? You haven't? Who has? Where have you seen it? Yeah. Okay, where have you seen it? Anybody else? Where have you seen it? All right. There's a famous picture of this guy pictured with four famous people, the Beatles. The Beatles. The Beatles band tried sex and drugs as their path to enlightenment, didn't find fulfillment, so they got on a plane, went to India, met the Maharishi Mesh Yogi, learned <laughs> transcendental meditation, and ended up, in fact, producing an entire album that in essence was, was a, a memory to this. In fact, one of the guys later, George Harrison, who was a member of the Beatles, later on wrote a solo song called My Sweet Lord. That is, that is an ode to this teacher and to the things he taught. My Sweet Lord. Because I know a lot of people say, oh, My Sweet Lord, that's got to be about Jesus. It's not about Jesus. It's not about Jesus. It's about this spiritual teacher. All right, here's the rest of the story. Based on his interaction with the Beatles, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi became an international phenomenon, especially in the United States of America. He came to America and began to establish training centers all over the country. In these training centers, people could come and pay money and learn transcendental meditation, which he believed would not only help center them and help them lead a better life, but actually, if they all meditated together, could in fact change the world around them. Anybody from Iowa? Seriously, not one person from Iowa. Okay, one person from Iowa. Have you ever heard of a town called Fairfield, Iowa? Yeah, Fairfield, Iowa has a university. It's called the Maharishi University of Management. Maharishi University of Management. At this university, students are taught transcendental meditation as a way to improve their success in the world. The president of this college is a man named John Hagelin. We don't know a lot about him. I've tried to look him up on the internet, try to find specific credentials. He claims to have studied physics at Harvard. So, he, so in, other, in other words, he's not saying, this is all spiritual, this is all warm, fuzzy stuff. He's saying, this is scientific. This stuff actually is real. It's scientific. We can prove it. And if you will do this, you can make a better world. In fact, he wrote a book called Manual for a Perfect Government, How to Harness the Laws of Nature to Bring Maximum Success to Governmental Administration. Again, harness the laws of nature. What's he talking about? Higher consciousness, this oneness, harness the power of this force, and then you can make things work better. So in the book, I, I was very curious, what's his military plan? Because I know we have international troubles in places around the world, right? And sometimes armies go in there to try to restore the peace. What is his plan for the military? He says his military plan is to have a co what he calls a quote-unquote coherence-creating group of 5,000 to 10,000 troops to rush into trouble spots to meditate. <laughs> this prevention wing, quote, this prevention wing is fully capable of preventing the outbreak of war, end quote. Okay. That's in the book. I know there are some doubters. In a session at Summit earlier this summer, there were two Marines here who had gotten leave from the Marines to come to Summit for a couple of weeks. And I asked them, what do you think about that? And one of them just looked at me in the middle of the lecture and said, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> But what, what is he actually saying here? He's actually saying that if you meditate, you tap into this power, you can force 
the universe to bend to the will of enough people who want it to do something. So, the whole book is example after example of, we had a coherence creating group, we went to Washington DC and meditated, and students' test scores went up by several points, and we went to this city and meditated, and crime went down by X number of points. So, he's taking the correlations that might exist based on lots of factors, and then he's, use, he's developing, a, trying to develop a causation. Our being there is what caused these things to happen. Engineers call that overfitting the model, <laughs> right? Trying to take every, all these variables and try to make sense of them. But even smart people can fall victim to that idea if they really, really want to believe it. So here's the rest of the story. In the 1990s, John Hagelin decided to start a political party called the Natural Law Party, the NLP. And I believe you're going to find, when you vote, they're still on the ballot. You'll still see them on there. It, this, is, this is kind of a shocking thing. How many of you have actually voted for a president? So you're, that's, okay, you've, a lot of you have voted for a president. Well, if you haven't voted for a president, if you did vote for a president, you know when you got, when you got into the voting booth, the, the two most popular options were obviously Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. But there were lots of other people on the ballot, weren't there? There was an American party on the ballot. There was a socialist party on the ballot. There was a socialist workers party on the ballot. There's the Green Party on the ballot. There's the NLP or natural law party on the ballot. There's the Constitution party on the ballot. There's the Libertarian party on the ballot. There are lots and lots of people running for president. So the NLP, the natural law party, John Hagelin ran for president, but they also ran candidates for a lot of other offices, state legislators, House of Representatives, school board, city councils, all across the United States of America. I don't know that any were elected. I think there were a handful elected in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> so it wasn't a widely successful movement. It was very well funded, lots of newspaper ads, all these kinds of things. But it wasn't very successful because a lot of people looked at it and said, I just don't buy it. Even if they believed that God is a cosmic force, they just don't believe that Having these coherence creating groups is going to change the world. But you can see why he would believe it, can't you? Just based on what we've talked about so far. He would, he would believe it because he thinks that everything is spiritual, that God is within, that everything is about the search for a higher consciousness, and if we all work on this together, we can find great success. So where does this fit with all of this information we have on our chart? Has this chart been helpful to you? you? You started to see how the pieces come together. And you realize, once again, we're not saying there's no truth in any of these worldviews. Most of them have identified some truths. So we're not saying they are absolutely false. We're saying they don't account for all of reality, as I believe the Christian worldview does. But let's take a look at the account of reality that the cosmic humanist worldview gives. Cosmic humanism in theology is pantheism. Let's break that term down for a minute. Ism means a be belief. Theos means God. Pan means all. So pantheism means all is God. Everything is God. Is that a fair term to apply for theology for this worldview? It's a pretty fair term. Most people holding that view are going to believe they're going to be pantheist. Let's look at philosophy. Philosophy, remember, answers questions like, what actually exists? How do we know? What's right or wrong? So questions like <coughs> metaphysics, epistemology, and ethics are all part of the, the study of philosophy. Non-naturalism. Ism is a belief. Naturalism, do you remember what that is? We did talk about that. Remember what naturalism says as opposed to materialism? Nothing supernatural exists, right. So materialism says only the material world exists. Naturalism says everything that happens has a natural explanation. So non-naturalism is to say that everything that happens has a non-natural explanation. What actually exists and how do we know and how should we live? Non-naturalism is the key to it. Under ethics, moral relativism. Of course, the word karma is there in your notes as well. That's an important distinction. 
The law of karma essentially says what comes around goes around. You want to be nice in this life because when you do good things, good will come back to you. A lot of people in this world, you believe in reincarnation. So they believe good will come back to you in a future life. If you do bad things in this life, bad will come back to you in a future life. So for a lot of people, this explains suffering. They would say, well, why is this person suffering in this life now? They're suffering in this life because they were bad in a previous life. So should you help them? Should you alleviate their suffering? No, you should not. Because if you alleviate their suffering, they can't fully cleanse themselves of the bad karma they collected in a previous life, and therefore, they're going to have another lifetime of suffering. So the best way to help suffering people is to ignore them and let them work it out. And in the future, they may die, but in a future life, they'll be better off for it. This is why you will find almost no hospitals that have been started by cosmic humanists. This is why you will find no works of charity started by cosmic humanists. This is why when you go to places like India, almost every single ministry of compassion in India has been started by Christians, not by people who embrace the, the national religion. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So you see, you see this law of karma, moral relativism. It does become moral, re morally relativistic in the sense that people will tell you, look, you have to do what you think is right for you. The law of karma is going to decide for you, but I can't tell you what's right or what's wrong.